Welcome, guys. Uh, and uh, Keeper Eric and Keeper Grace here. We are in our bat cave in the Katofa building. Yeah, so it's almost Halloween and Spooktacular is coming up this weekend, so we thought we'd do something uh, kind of Halloween related. Um, I don't know. This is the staff. We have one child um, in a pink jacket without a mask on, so that's a medical. Oh, sorry. So a lot of people think bats are kind of scary, spooky, Halloween related. But what's interesting is in this part of the country, by Halloween, most of the bats are hibernating. You're not going to see a bat on Halloween in Illinois. Um, maybe some of the southern states, definitely in some of the tropical areas, the bats are going to be out. But here in town, you're not going to see a bat flying around on Halloween. Uh, Bats are obviously associated with vampires. People tell stories that vampires can turn themselves into bats. And that probably comes from the vampire bats that live in Central and South America. And those are bats that actually do drink animals' blood. So those bats will find a, usually a large mammal, sometimes a large bird. And where those animals are usually sleeping because the bats are nocturnal and they will make a little tiny incision in their um, skin somewhere and start drinking the blood and their saliva has an anticoagulant which means it keeps the blood from clotting so the blood keeps running um, as the bat drinks it and the bat drinks so much blood at one time that it has to sit a minute and it its body very quickly separates the water out of the um, blood and it, it has to urinate a really um, kind of un highly unfiltered urine so that it can get off the ground because it weighs so much it can't fly. Um, there are zoos around that have vampire bats if you'd like to go see them. We do not have vampire bats. We have Siva's short-tailed bats as well as Jamaican fruit bats. And there's a little guy right there. This is a Siba. Oh, my. Where's the Where's the Jamaicans? Get it up close up uh, on. I can't see where the Jamaicans are. I think they're up a little higher. So it's kind of hard to tell in this light, but they have really funny looking noses and funny looking faces. Oh. It's the lemurs. <laughs> lemurs are inside for the winter. <laughs> there he goes. Um, so hopefully you get to see that, that uh, nose. And their faces are all built for echolocation. So the bats are sending out little clicks. I, used to, I was hearing something. I think you can probably hear them. Ooh. Yeah, you see if we can hear the little clicks. If the lemurs would stop talking. Yes. Lemurs have to have the last word. They're flopping around, so I'm just hard to hear. So anyhow, they send little clicks out. Well, there's the there's some Jamaicans those, up there. Yeah, the Jamaicans are a little bit. They're a little bit bigger. There's, there's those couple in the corner. There. So they send out these bats send out clicks, and the clicks bounce back, and they can tell where different things are, so they don't fly into them. Or if they're hunting, they can fly to the prey ants. Now most of the bats here in Illinois are insect eaters, so they're going to be really good at eating the mosquitoes and things like that that we don't like. Um, these bats are, are fruit eaters, so the Sebas and the Jamaicans eat fruit, they don't eat bugs. So we hang bananas in here for them, and right, then... So we've we got them. bananas, oops, okay. backlit, okay here we go. So you can see this is the banana that they've eaten out of already. They just eat the outside of the peel and then all the way up. So yeah, they, they'll, they'll eat these tonight. They'll rip the peels up and then eat the, 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 fruit, the fruit part in it. So let's see what else we got. So they've already been fed for the night. Yeah. So we've got some cantaloupe, oranges, apples, strawberries. This stuff here is... And then this stuff in the middle is this special bat pudding. It, Smells really good. It doesn't taste good. 
I've tried it. It's a powder where you put some water in and mix it up and then it hardens. Like a pudding, call it pudding. Yeah. Um, these trays up on these shelves in the corner. There's usually one up here and then one up there as well. And that's where their food goes. Yeah. If you guys are watching, if you have any questions, we are live so you can ask us. We'll answer yeah, them. shout out any bat questions you have. Or if you have questions about Spooktacular coming up, I know a lot of people are excited yeah. about it. Oh, Angela says hi. Hi, Angela. I feel like she won one of our... Uh, yeah, Angela Animal Watson. painting. She's been a faithful watcher through. And I might be making this up. I think Angela might be in California. Yeah, I think Angela's the one in California. So, cool. Watching with her kids across the country. That's yeah. so awesome. We were doing these a lot more during the summer and the spring mostly. We were doing them almost daily during the spring. And then now that the zoo's open, we're a little bit busy. We're not a little busy. Summer. Do uh, Lisa would like to know if they fly into your hair? <laughs> um, well, they don't intentionally fly into our hair. They, they do bump into you sometimes, so they're not intentionally going to fly into your hair. And if one of them does land in your hair, what you want to do is just stand still and let it work its way out. It's not going to intentionally tangle itself up and do anything like that. So, will they accidentally land in your hair every once in a while? Yeah, yeah. I think one of, one of our previous keepers has a really cool picture of uh, a bat. Uh, he had longer hair, and a bat grabbed onto his hair. It was just, just hanging out for a minute, but he flew away. Yeah. Um, the echolocation works pretty good, but um, so they, they're pretty good about avoiding you, but... Last time we did a live in here, one of them flew into my face. I made a really fun gif about it. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was wonderful. So. Um, oh, yeah. oh, my cousins are watching. Hi, Jackson. Hi, Helen. What you got to remember about bats is they're very little compared to us. These are, what, three, four inches, something like that. So even if it flew into our hair or landed on our arm and started biting, um, it, they're, it's, they're, we're going to hurt them more than they can hurt us. So they want to avoid us more than anything. They don't want to um, intentionally hurt us. Uh, bats in Illinois are known to be rabies carriers. So you do not want to have one in your house. And if you do, um, the best thing to do is probably call a professional to get it out. Because um, you don't want to accidentally get bit and then have to get the rabies post-exposure shots. Yeah. Heard they are not fun. No, luckily I've avoided that. Yeah, I've so, avoided that as well in my career so far. Um, and if you get them in your attic, you want to, again, call on a professional who will know how and when to seal up your attic. You don't want to seal them up while they're in your attic. And I think there are sometimes rules about um, relocating them. You have to do it at certain times so they don't have uh, babies. You're not hurting the babies. Right. Because yeah. like I said, bats are really important. They, they cut down on the mosquito population. Bats are so important. Oh, I just looked that fact up. How many, how many mosquitoes a bat can eat in one yeah, night? we were having a discussion. We were having a discussion. Th these, this is what zookeepers chat about. <laughs> yes, we can look that up. I think it's over a thousand in one night, or, or a thousand an hour. That's what it I was. Think, well, I think that's what it is. It's I mean, approximately a thousand mosquitoes in one hour. That is why when I buy a house, I'm putting up a bat house. Bats are, are little animals, um, and little animals, uh, little mammals, um, generally have really high metabolisms, so they have to eat a lot. So a mouse um, is eating a ton. A little tamarind is going to eat a lot versus. It's going to be eating constantly versus a gorilla who is going to eat a lot less frequently. So little animals are going to have to eat a lot, so that's why they go through a lot of mosquitoes. Right. And with West Nile and things like that, mm -hmm. it's really important. There are hundreds and hundreds of types of bat species. There's more bats than almost any type of other mammal, except maybe rodents. Mm -hmm. um, and they live all over the world. They live in uh, tropic areas, there's a ton of different types. 
I got a good question. You got a good one? Okay. <laughs> uh, Matt, I believe. Oh, Matty, what's up? Buddy? <laughs> he wants to know how many mosquitoes you eat in the night. How many do I eat in the night? <laughs> um, it depends on if I've made dinner or not. <laughs> and how hungry I am. How much work we did at the zoo today. Yeah, I, so, I mean, the lemur exhibit was so full of mosquitoes this summer that I probably ate a bunch just... Literally. I would say mosquito, or the mosquito, the lemur exhibit and the red panda exhibits yeah. are probably the worst for mosquitoes in the summer. Yeah, so, yeah, I think you eat some just by breeding when you go out yeah. to clean those animals. Well, not this year because we got this masks right? on. It, it, masks not this summer. Right? We had to wear masks in, in lemur and palace cat all summer. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out any other questions you have about our bats. I think last time, oh, here's one. Oh, she's he's not going to sit still. We can talk about these guys. We get lots of questions about, oh, and they're gone. Cardinals, cardinals. We have a pair of cardinals in here. Red caps cardinals. And there's one, they're both up, way up high. Um, we have a breeding pair of cardinals in here, and they are native cave dwellers. So they would live in a, the same caves as these bats in the wild. So that's why we have this, this pair of birds in here. Can Larkin asks, can the mosquitoes pass on nasty viruses like the West Nile virus to the bats? Oh, that's a great question. And we can get a little bit deeper into that if we want. So bats are very immune to a lot of diseases. So um, what they're finding out is that something like coronavirus, which is really deadly for humans, it's bad for cats, it's bad for um, weasels, things like that, it doesn't really affect bats. And because they're eating a lot of mosquitoes, which can carry malaria and West Nile and COVID and things like that, they just aren't as, a, as susceptible. They don't catch it as much. So it's one of those meat adaptations that nature has come up with that um, the animals controlling the Mosquitoes, which are disease infested, just don't catch them as much. Exactly. But what it does mean is that um, they can carry things like COVID, and then when we put them in proximity to other animals, they can pass that on to the other animals. So when you are catching bats and putting them in a market next to pangolins and uh, birds and bears and things like that, as the bats go to the bathroom and breathe, they can pass that COVID on or whatever other disease. Right. Um, so you have to be very careful about uh, eating bats and treating them like a food stuff as opposed to uh, a wild animal. Yeah. Uh, we, we got a couple good questions now. Good. Um, Karen asked, do bats live in urban areas? Bats definitely live in urban areas. Mm -hmm. And my guess is if you've got a, a street light near you, if you spend some time outside during the summer, you'd probably see them. You'll probably see one fluttering around. Mm -hmm. um, now, there are some night birds that will fly around, and there are some big moths that kind of mimic a bat if you don't know what you're looking for. But um, yeah, they're, they're all around, and you can put a bat house in your yard, whether you live in um, downtown Bloomington or whether you live out in the, the country. Mm -hmm. because they will come and roost there during the, the summer. Um, we did see, I won't tell people where it is because I don't want them to look for it, but we did have a <laughs> bat that spent all summer here at the zoo mm -hmm. hanging out. And it's I cool. just looked the other day, he was gone. Oh. So he must have gone someplace warm. Someplace uh, warmer. To uh, hibernate for the winter. But Yeah, when I was uh, at a church growing up, we had uh, like a plaque outside the church and it was like a plaque attached to a rock. So there was like a half an inch of space between the plaque and the rock. And there were always some little brown bats that, that slept in there during the day yeah. for the summer. Um, Rebecca asked, is white nose still a thing? Yes, yes. definitely. Um, I was down in Missouri last summer at a cave and 
their request was that you didn't wear any shoes that had been in another cave for the past year. Mm -hmm. So if you do a lot of caving, what you probably need to do is um, trade out your shoes frequently. Uh, because it's below the level of white nose is. So yeah, white nose syndrome. White nose is a, a fungus, actually, that can be passed from bat to bat because they live in tightly packed social situations. And um, especially over the winter, when the bats are hibernating, that fungus can grow over their noses and get in their lungs and stuff and cause them to die, essentially. So you have these massive colonies of bats with um, tens of thousands of individuals and this white nose will get it in with them and they'll all end up dying from it. Um, and like I said, they're, they're so important that as insect eaters in um, it helps South control. America, they're pollinators. They pollinate cacti out in uh -huh. Arizona and places like that. Yeah. So, I mean, people are afraid of bats and they're scared and they treat them horribly sometimes. But they're so critical, and if we start losing bats due to white nose, that can affect um, how many mosquitoes there are and how many other bugs there are that might eat our corn crops and yeah. other things like that. So. I went to school in Wisconsin, and white nose is a, a, a big problem in Wisconsin. And uh, there's a lot of research happening up there and even uh, I worked for a wildlife rehabber for a summer and his wife trains dogs and I'm sure she will correct me if I am saying explaining this wrong but I know she is training one of her dogs to detect white nose syndrome in caves so that they can like go in and remove infected bats so that whole colonies aren't wiped out by this by this fungus um, oh, Larkin said that Jackson, her son, that was his question. That he, he gets credit for the, the good question, not, her, not his mom. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome see. question, Jackson. Um, Angela's asking, how long do bats live for? Oh, goodness. I think it depends on the species, I believe. Right, yeah, there's so many different species. There's, well, I believe got... the, these guys live for like 10, 10, 10 to 15 years, yeah, something I like think that? We haven't gotten it. We haven't gotten new bats in a while. These are all boys, so we don't yes. have baby bats here. Yes, they are easy to sex if you get them in your hand. Um, the problem with bats is that they do breed fairly readily. Uh, so we want to make sure we have about, what do we have here, about 100? 100, 100 yeah, something like that, bat. yeah. We want to make sure we have that many and not 200 or 250 or whatever. So, um, but these guys have been here, some of them probably six or eight years, I believe. Um, so yeah. and then I feel like we got a, a couple more. We got like 30 more maybe like four years ago. It was right after I started, okay. yeah. So there are these four, four or five Everybody years, four or five years ago. Four. Um, but remember that we've got these type, there's the smaller type, there's the big, um, we call them flying foxes. Mm, that's so, what I want. The mega a flying fox. Yeah, so. So these are called microchiropterans, all of the little bats that use echolocation. That's your vocab word for the day. Yep. And then <laughs> the big ones, the flying foxes, are, are called megachiropterans. And those things can be probably Somebody's eight Somebody's arguing inches. over here. Yeah. Can you hear that? I know, Arguing over the corner, just yeah. like siblings. Yeah. <laughs> So they are, you know. I love bats. I think they're fascinating. They're individuals with personalities and, and lives. They're not little um, automatons that fly around. There is somebody unhappy in this corner. Go on. Go on at it. I think those are Jamaicans too. Yeah, right? I think those are the Jamaicans. These are the Jamaicans right here. Actually, yeah, I think these are the Jamaicans and oh, the fruit bat. The Seba just flew away. So that's a CB. You can see how much smaller he is than the Jamaicans. Next time you um, pick up a bottle of Bacardi rum, <laughs> if you're 21 years old, right. Only they do have a bat on the um, bottle because they realize how important the bats were for um, pollinating the plants and the flowers that they to make the rum. To make the rum. Um, and I think they do a lot of bat conservation. Bacardi I think so rums. too, yeah. 
So just a little extra fun fact. Um, we're going to get out of here and talk just, about... Oh, do we have one more thing? Well, no, do you want to talk about spectacular? Yes, food? I did. I left my, my little sheet. Your cheat sheet? <laughs> um, so I think I have it down. It's um, this Friday and Saturday from 5 to 7 each night, I think. I think it's 5 to 7 on Friday and Saturday. And Sunday is noon to 3. That sounds right. Okay, I think that's right. We'll get in trouble for that. We will. <laughs> Remember, you do have to have a um, reservation or you have to have a, a time slot. Yeah. So I think they're doing hour blocks at a time. Where you call in and then you can get a block from like 5 to 6 or 6 to 7 to make sure that we're not overloaded. We're trying to keep everybody spaced out. Um, and so we've got a whole bunch of um, Halloween blow-ups done, like you put in your yard. There's a whole yeah, bunch of Yeah, there's out. decorations all over the zoo. Um, we're getting ready for you guys. Our um, gift shop manager, Morgan, getting a photo booth ready yesterday, yeah. which is pretty cool. Um, the kids are going to get a goodie bag um, at the end of the, the day. Yeah. Um, when they make it through. And as you leave. It. Instead of the sponsor tables, we have the, a goodie bag as you leave. Right. And then on top of that, there's um, everybody who comes and gets a cup, uh, zoo cup, where you can get a free soda. Free drink. So I think, oh, uh, how much did it cost? $4? Did I make that up? I don't remember. I think everybody everybody has to pay members to not get it free for the soda. No, yeah, mem it's cheaper for members, but yeah. Um, but uh, everything will be on the website. Call up. And then on Friday from 3 to 5 in the park, the, they're doing a classic cars and candy, like a drive-through... Um, drive-through trunk or treat type of thing. Drive-through trunk or treat, and they're going to have the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Yes. That's awesome. So Maybe I'll all the parents can sing the song for your kids. Uh, Hold on. 10-4. Do you want to sing the Dino's song? Oscar no, I'm. A, I haven't done. Well, I probably know it, but it's been a minute. I don't want to okay. embarrass myself. <laughs> this is going on Facebook. <laughs> so, um, anyhow, lots of Halloween stuff going on here in the park and the zoo this weekend. Um, call three zero nine four three four two two five zero. Get your reservation, and we'll be back next week with. We're going to do more Halloween animals. More Halloween animals. See, see if you guys can guess. What other Halloween yeah. animals do we have in the zoo? Maybe you think of better Halloween animals. We got two picked that I think are going to be yeah. pretty cool. Grace, one is one of my favorites. Grace will talk about them. Um, we'll have a lot of fun. So, <laughs> see you at Spooktacular, hopefully. And thanks yeah. for watching today. Bye, guys.